if we're talking about absolute demons, yeah, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Dude, here's the thing. I'm not better than anybody I am going to watch. I don't like feeding the elderly to the young. <laughs> feeding the elderly? Listen, listen. <coughs> Mike Tyson is still a very scary guy. You get into a problem with Mike Tyson at the fucking grocery store, I, dude, It's problems. a problem. Even Mike no, Tyson against a 28-year-old boxer who can fucking box still a problem. Is a is here's the thing, it's not it doesn't matter how tough Tyson is, it doesn't matter how perfect his technique Age. is. It doesn't even matter if he's got a gas tank for days. It's his fucking brain hitting his skull and bouncing back and forth. There is just you cannot take it. There is a threshold. Older. Yeah. That's why they did the fucking gentleman's agreement like light head. <laughs> yeah, light head. <laughs> the um, uh, the light head shots for yeah. Um, oh, the Roy, Roy, Jones. Roy Jones. Yeah, Roy yeah. Jones. They had a so, thing like no knockout punches to the head. It was just this like won't be thing. that obviously. Like, but yo, is Jake really gonna be like I talk? I, I knocked out Mike Tyson. Even a hundred percent. Is this gonna be how, dude? It's Jake Paul. We don't know if this is an sure, but yet. I actually, dude, I think I want to think. I I don't think Jake would. I, I think he would take the fight, obviously, for the money and do the fight. And There's going to be way too many stipulations But I on don't it. think he would fucking... I don't think he would be a punk about it. I really don't. Like, he, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a fucking boxer, and he's... Say what you will about him. He's got a, a, a level of honor. He's got hands. Well, not only that, he's, he's got a level of honor to him, and I don't think he's going to be like, I knocked out the best boxer on the planet. Like, he knows he's fucking 60, you know? Like, but it's also I want like, everybody to make money straight up. But here's but. the thing: the people that are backing, I'm not backing anybody in this fight because, like, who fucking knows? Maybe there isn't as the stipulations that we think they're going to be on it. And Mike Tyson goes out there and knocks his fucking head into. I'm not even doubting dimension. Mike Tyson can win. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if it's not an immediate knockout, fifty something year old brain matter has to go to war. Yeah. Like it's not. It's just not fucking there. It doesn't matter. What he may be on, or what he may not be on, there's there's a reason fighters stop fighting at a certain age. In boxing, especially, it's very, you know, uh, top end heavy. Right. You know, like it's 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 but, not a good thing. I'm gonna watch. You know, I'm. But what I'm but, saying is, like, with the people that are like, it's still Mike Tyson. That's the that's where the problem comes in. It is Be still Mike Tyson. It's still but, Mike Tyson, but people are saying like, if like Jake Paul. J Let's say Jake Paul knocks him out. Like, it, for, however you want to classify a knockout for what happens in the ring yeah. in boxing, is he knocks him out, and then Jake Paul will be like, "Yeah, but it's still Mike Tyson." Like, he's not going to talk about age. He's not going to talk about anything else. He's going to say it was still Mike Tyson. Did you see the training footage? I got Mike Tyson. You know what? Yeah, you're probably right. He is going to do that. I just, it's not a good thing. You know, it's like when fucking evander came back and looked fucking vitor right just dude yeah like it's not and not that fucking jake is vitor by any means, juicy but, vitor <laughs> but dude jake can fight like it's it just yeah. should be said jake can fight and he can 100 percent crack mike tyson is older and that's a problem. Yeah, he's still got the look in his eyes because he's a psychopath, but it's just, it's The it's look in different. your eyes, what the fuck? What does look in your eyes mean when you're going to be looking at the fucking lights? Yeah. What the fuck? But I know <laughs> what I mean by that is like he's still driven and he's still. Oh, it's still, he can win. <coughs> he 100% can win. Tyson. He can win. T but Tyson is not even a bad bet if you're, if you're asking right. my opinion. But the thing it's is. It's just not a fucking good thing to be happening. The, the only thing that bothers me about it is. The world was starting to look at Jake Paul and be like, okay, he's at least trying to fight these actual boxers that have good records th that are on his level, that have been doing it for a long time, blah, blah, blah. So he went back to back with fighting actual boxers in that realm, beat them, and then he was like, I'm going to keep you know, fighting these boxers. I want to gain the ranks and get a title one day. And then he announces a Mike Tyson fight and cool. just kind of throws away all that work that people were try starting to take him seriously. At the same time, you know, we, again, we look at it as a sport because it is, 
people got to get paid, you know, and I, I wouldn't be any better than him in that situation. I would probably look for the biggest bag because at the end of the day, who, who I don't got shit to prove to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't got shit to prove to fucking some guy at the grocery store, let, let alone be someone like, uh, you know, J Jake being a fucking celebrity in whatever context. Like, he, he can do whatever he wants, but he should have probably wanted to go that route just to, like, not to, to gain support because people want to support him. Like, it's weird. They're like, ah, yeah, he got him, but. You know, it's an MMA guy. It's like, always, oh, oh, he got him, but it's always a he's butt. old. It's like it's always a butt. people want to fucking, it's, they don't want to look at him as the Disney kid anymore because he doesn't really, at least that I've seen, he's not as viral anymore. He doesn't act like a buffoon. No. Really. He just talks shit within the context of the fight, and which everybody does. So He's trying to be a, a boxer. He is a boxer. I wanted to see him and Nate in the cage. I, they said it after the fight. It's like, I want to fight you in MMA too. Like, that was said. It, you can... Look it up. That's a that's another thing too. Nate Diaz and Masvidal is just going to be a boxing match and not MMA. Should be bare knuckle. I mean, you say that about every fight, but is there a not... more appropriate fucking fight to be bare knuckle? Yeah, but no, like really think about it. Take 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 them dudes being athletes out of it. Is there a more appropriate bare knuckle fight you can think of? No, between in America, would be perfect. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Like, Nate Diaz would like he. Even if he didn't lose that fight, he would walk away like he just lost a fight with a fucking. He's the only chipper. dude who can lose and not lose. Nate Diaz, <laughs> like, Nate Diaz gets cut so easily. It's just like it just makes it so much worse if he was doing a bare knuckle fight, which is sick. Yeah, like, but look, us not getting like, a rematch in UFC, I think, is just a disservice. I don't. Yes, for sure. I don't like bare knuckle like as a sport like i don't like the rule set and what i mean by that is and this is coming from somebody who went to vegas for the fucking you know mm -hmm. uh it, i like bare knuckle mma because that's as close to fucking gladiator shit as you're gonna get the next yeah. step is actually letting people kill each other on tv <laughs> which i gotta tell you the way the world's going that that like they might be like all right we got fucking death row inmates fighting to, on saturday i mean like, you know but anyway the it's the most fucking primal shit you can do and it's i don't care what anybody says it is not that much different a raw elbow is still a raw elbow it's yeah. protecting your hands yeah you're gonna get a little more cut but go fucking play golf i don't uh, know what to tell you it's just it would make sense if they did it too only because i do like that active clinch shit though yeah masvidal has a bare knuckle MMA promotion. So it would be super easy, but I don't think Nate would want to, uh, go into his promotion. It would have to be like a, a UFC level. Yeah. Actually, yeah. they both would probably feel that way, but Masvidal I, doesn't I have saying. the money for that too, to pay yeah. them what they need for that. Well, cause Nate would come in under real fight mm -hmm. and, uh, Masvidal would have game bread and it would just probably be a nightmare. So they'd probably just both do it in the UFC. But if Dana was like, yo, you guys want to do a bare knuckle clause? Yeah. That would be awesome. Like, I know it's not going to happen, and well, what are we doing here? But is a bare knuckle MMA fight really that much different than a four ounce MMA fight? As somebody yeah. who has been hit in the face with both, it's fucking not. Yeah, it's it's just not. Do you think bare knuckle is going to get more popular, or if it's just going to peak and then no, it's go very away? popular because it's a very it's the reason people like boxing. The reason MMA kind of puts people off is people understand hitting stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like taking their hands and hitting shit. Uh, kicks, I mean, sometimes. You know what I mean? But if you don't know how to throw a kick, like if you, have you ever kicked something wrong? You're like out of commission for like three and a half weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's a fucking soccer ball. Take a shinner like, ah, from fuck, a Razor you know scooter. I mean? Yeah, yeah, dude. You just, mm. you know. Um, so when you start working in the ground shit and people just don't understand it and they, they've never done it, it's it's a lot more to take in. Boxing is, like, you feel like you can do that. You know what I mean? Because in, in essence, you can just... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bare knuckle, you get cut more, like you said. So that bloodlust that a lot of people just demote fighting to, you know, which say what you will about that. But um, I think it's going to only get more popular. I think bare knuckle MMA is going to get more popular. I think there's going to be some waves. I think some idiot senator is going to like try to, you know, be like this needs to be less right. violent, needs to have gloves, and needs to have this. But like, 
It really doesn't. If the two people are willing to fight, then that's all you should need. That's it. It doesn't matter. Agree on the rule set. I'm just happy we have Mike Perry in uh, BKFC. Could you imagine a Mike Perry bare knuckle fight? I would. I love every second of it. Dude. Mike Perry is, he's the goat. He's the best. It's interesting though when, <laughs> when you see the bare knuckle dudes that, and I'm talking MMA here, um, they fight more, they're stiff. Mm. Like all of it, and Mike Perry talks about it. He's like, when you're, when you do MMA and you're in boxing, you're like kind of loose. He's like, in bare knuckle, you gotta, you know what I mean? You have a tight, tight, tight shell, tight guard. Because it's boxing. Yeah, but it seems like that kind of transfers to the MMA fights that I've seen in it too. Because um, it it's like it's like a built in switch. It's like oh, I'm I'm gonna get cut more now because this guy isn't I'm wearing have to gloves. protect myself a lot more. It's like were you not worried about that fucking shin, homeboy? Like who cares that his fucking the softest part that is gonna hit you is now ungloved? It's a funny comparison is when Mike Perry fought MVP. That, that that was a really cool one. It's like you take away most of MVP's of weapons. weapons, and look what happens to like a tri- a guy that just likes to throw hands. At the end of the day, throwing hands fucking works. There's there's no argument against it. It works. Um, but MVP is not. He did great. You know, I mean, he you know he he wasn't a slouch in the fight. But once you take away the side steps and like the the kicks and the fucking teeps and or the the side kicks, I'm sorry. Once you take away all the flair, it's it's just kind of loose boxing. It's like mm. you got a lot of holes, you know. I I'm just so uh, what I kind of refer back to is like styles and coming from different sports and stuff like that. Is um, what's her face in the PFL, the quote boxer Clarissa Shields. Yes, Clarissa Shields. So she came over PFL and she's like known as like the best female boxer ever. Do it. She came over to PFL. She won her debut. Lost her second because she got just manhandled by a wrestler. So, which is going to happen. I understand why people do that. Like, oh, you're a boxer. You're going to come over here. Let me show you something. Because I'm going to rip a leg kick on a boxer, too. You know, like just. But to the point before you get into your thing is like, she was the only like boxer that's like had a big name that actually was like, I'm going to go to MMA. Like, a lot of MMA guys are going over to boxing and trying it and all of them, you know, losing. Well, because it's easier. (laughs) So, yeah. like, here's the thing. It is not easier, like, a sport. Like, the sweet science is a lot harder to master than I think a lot of people want to give it credit for because everyone just thinks MMA is the top. And it is. In a real fight on the street, in a fucking drive through mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to kick you in the face on the ground. Like, that's right. just what's going to happen. You want to hop into the ring and fucking we're doing the steps and the footwork and, you know, the, the body shots. It's a whole different game. and But it's easier. It's easier to be a top performing MMA athlete and then just go train for fuck it even because you're twelve still, weeks. You're even still, twelve weeks is boxing. You're it's still consistently enough. training boxing in the gym anyway. Exactly. And there, I know there's plenty of people that have gone to like those sports like kickboxing over to MMA and just actual like it's just not the tie. You take a boxer trying to go over to MMA with less than probably a year, and that has to be a super athlete person, but less than like a year of like on the ground MMA up and down transitional training just to keep them fucking alive. If they know you're a boxer, like if you come over into an MMA fight and they're like, they know you're a boxer, they're going to try to take you down, which leads into what I was saying. What do you think about fighters that do that? Specifically just go from different sports. Oh, you're a boxer, huh? Double leg. It's smart. I'm not negating. You got to do what wins the fight. Exactly. But is there not a level of fucking pride? Like, let's do it. You know? Well, I think, I think it's Kevin Holland syndrome. Like he, which we've seen how that goes sometimes. He, he's just like, whatever, I'm going to bang with this person, which he knows he should take down certain people. Like, like wonder boy. Like, it's not that he can't stand up with anybody in the division. Right. I'm not saying he, he can't knock out the best striker. Right. Mm. So, it's just one of those things. He has the tools. Kevin Holland, a hundred percent. He's a grappler. But he, that's people, why people don't like realize him. that about that about him. But he, people say, why doesn't he do this? Why? And it's Yoel Romero, Olympic wrestler, doesn't wrestle people. It's for the love of the game. Man. Yeah. They, did they just want to go to war? Like, even if taking somebody down and subduing them makes sense, like a lot of the times it's not as satisfying. And I mean. The cardio outburst is also way different. So, mm-hmm. say what you will about it, it's it's probably smarter to throw less takedowns if you're not getting them. You know what I mean? Um, 
But I, I just think there's – it's smart. You should do it. It's an easy one-up on your career in most cases. But, like, don't you want to, like, see what your jab is like to the boxer? I think like, at this that is level, your cage. Show him what's up. I think at that level, it almost, like, it's irrelevant only because, like, look at the Bo Nickel thing. At that level, what are you talking about? You're still gonna get paid, and you're yeah. and if you, but you're gonna get paid if you win. So take the path of least resistance and get that double leg on a boxer. And yeah, and you want to think about your, uh, you know, longevity of not getting hurt, and right? Out of the gym, like there's people that fall in love with the knockout once they get that knockout, and you're a wrestler. But at what cost? It like you're gonna fall in love with the knockout, and you're just gonna forget what got you to the dance. You know what I mean? And I think you should have that strategically. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good thing to, um, you know, have in the game plan and your natural triggers is to do things like that. But there's a reason we like Mike Perry. There's a reason we like Kevin Holland. There's we a reason really we like, like Derek Mike Lewis. Perry. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's a technician is great, but sometimes it's just about going to war, man. You know, I think and we're going to see that's that's the kind of fights that interest most people i would think. i think we're gonna see more of that just as the years come because people are born training everything now yeah. it's not just you're raised being a boxer raised being a jujitsu guy people are gonna say like if you wanted to fight in any capacity you have to train it all it's like its own it's its own martial art now like yeah 100 so percent. mma in and uh, as somebody who does a lot of muay thai uh, occasionally, you know, some of my training partners, uh, shout out Jorgen, shout out Battles, MMA guys. The striking is noticeably different. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the shots are still getting through, it's whatever, but it's it's a different style. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it it's still a clash of different martial arts when you go like Muay Thai to MMA or whatever, but... MMA is still so young, it's kind of forming itself, and now it's getting to the point where it's like, it, it's now that everybody knows you have to train everything all the time, it's becoming its own, like, uh, it's its you're own seeing karate. a lot of the same shit, like a lot of position over its submission. It's own meta games kind of yes. developed. Yeah. yeah, it's its own karate. And that's why people <laughs> like Gordon Ryan and, and Dan, uh, or uh, Danaher are so interesting, is because they break the mold, Eddie Bravo. It breaks the mold on how to fight. Like, yeah. a wrestler is going to go position, you know, over submission. And in my opinion, I think you should do that because you should hit somebody to incapacitate right. them. But Eddie Bravo, like for Eddie Bravo, for example, um, his game is accentuated with extreme flexibility. So it's like it's easier for a smaller person against a bigger person to do... You know, it's it's the tenth planet system, and uh, yeah, his whole thing was I want to make jujitsu uh, that caters to MMA, and he and it broke the mold. And he did that, and yeah. Then now Gordon Ryan and them are doing that, you know, in different mm -hmm. ways now. Um, so it's really interesting to see those phases go through MMA as they have, but that's happening less and less. There's, there's less. There's not that many things you can attack on the human body. You got the head, the limbs. You know, there's, there's, eventually you're gonna run. It's like guitar court. You're gonna run out. You know, mm -hmm. so there's going to be, do you think there's going to be less and less specialists? Cutter. Yeah. There, and there definitely will be because people start to be MMA specialists and it's mm -hmm. because it's becoming its own thing. thing. Yeah. Like just because you're doing wrestling on Tuesdays and boxing on Wednesdays doesn't mean it's not developing its own style from there. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really interesting to see unfold. But to go back to what you're saying is, um, I, like I, I do see it as a sport at that level because we're watching it like that. If I if I want to just see like a crazy fight, I'll just Google it or so, or watch Street Beefs or something goofy, right? <laughs> um, Twitter knockouts, fucking death sentence. <laughs> um, um, but I see it as that like just do what got you to the dance. A and, good a good and, Twitter knockout video, caught rabbit hole, do the body good. You know what I mean? Do the yeah. soul something nice. You see a bunch of people getting starched for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> it um. What was I, what was I going to say, too? A, a prime example of it is when people fall in love with something that they're not a specialist in. It happened to Aaron Pico over in Bellator. His grappling, outstanding, yeah. right? And he was kind of like the rising prospect in Bellator. People were like, he's the next fucking coming. Mm -hmm. And then he fell in love with the hands a little bit, and he lost a few in a row. And then as soon as he won his next by his wrestling, he got on the mic, and he was like, I just need to do what I need to do. And 
you know, do what I know best. Mm -hmm. And then he started, he's won every single fight since, I think. A a good example of what we were talking about, about it becoming its own style, a a, a person example, in my opinion, is Bo Nickel. Because his boxing isn't, it's not the sweet science boxing. Mm -hmm. His kickboxing is not perfect Muay Thai. You know, his wrestling is fucking on point, as we know. But all of that mixed together, whatever holes you might see boxing, you're not fighting a boxer. You're fighting an MMA guy, Mm -hmm. a wrestler who's an MMA guy. I think Bo Nickel is a perfect example of a fucking specimen MMA fighter. Yeah. Like he... Because he's only been training MMA a few years. Exactly. Exactly my thing. He's got the the ground base. Whether you want to do the ground base in jujitsu, I kind of think that's going away. I think it's more going to be wrestling and boxing. I think that's what's going to take over in the the like the realm of MMA styles. I because kicks open you up for takedowns. Jujitsu is kind of a in MMA it becomes kind of a defensive yeah thing, you know. So if you have good wrestling and you have heavy hands, that can win you a lot of fights, in my opinion. Um. And Bo Nickel is like a really perfect example of that. It, it's not. Yeah. It's not a knock. He's just on, a freak of nature. Like, you know, he's great. He not only is he a freak of nature, he is talented and he's very good. His striking. He puts in the work. Let's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's say and that his he striking, puts in the work. His striking is good, but it's not like, you know, like we were saying. He, he hopped in. If he hopped into a boxing ring, even with a training camp, he would still have not perfect boxing. You know, because right. it's a different thing. So. He even said himself, like he took his mentality that he's raised up and all the years that he's put into wrestling just into his striking. And and I think we mentioned this before that like his wrestling's always going to be there now. You know what I mean? He's I always going to have with that. It, well, to an extent like when it, when I say his wrestling's already going to be there, it's kind of I'm saying he can lay off of the wrestling training as much as he's used to and just focus on his striking and he'll be absolutely okay and he's not going to lose a step as long as he's even a little bit active with it. It's like riding a bike for him, I think. But like it on the other side of side of stuff, mode. Maintenance, maintenance mode, maintenance mode, wrestling, maintenance mode. But he's yeah. also said that like he was like, if you're in your camp and you know you're gonna fight me, and all you're doing is training wrestling, you're gonna lose that fight ten times out of ten. Which he's right. Yeah, because he said just focus on your striking and try to knock me out. Because if you just if your hands, well, your boxing loses even a little bit of a step to try to gain an inch on me in wrestling, it's not gonna work. If you're in, so, there's different schools of thought on that, right? Like, you have to train for the wrestler. You know, you got to train those transitions, the up and downs, the wall work. Um, but if you're trying to out wrestle a guy, you know you're not going to out wrestle it. I think that might just be like ego, you know, or like uh, misguided coaching, even. Mm-hmm. Um, you should try to do what got, like you said, what got you to the dance, to the dance and, yeah. and keep working with that um, while preparing for going into unfamiliar territory. Mm-hmm. But uh, going to try to, and it, whether it's even if you try to outbox somebody or out Muay Thai somebody or out fucking wrestle somebody, whatever it is, you, you're the odds are stacked against you, you know, when because you're automatically conceding to the fact that now you're playing their game. If you're yeah. conceding that they're bet like going up against Bo Nickel as a wrestler, like even if you're another wrestler, just you're a like, nightmare. Yeah, sh- yeah, shit. It's like pulling the Kamzat card, dude. It's like, yeah, it's... fuck, dude. You know what I mean? So, do you, do you think that would be a terrible fight, Kamzat no, versus no, Bo Nickel? No, fuck that. Uh, Bo Nickel is absolutely good enough, and Kamzat is good enough. Um, I do think Kamzat striking um, is more precise from what we've seen, but I haven't seen that much of Bo Nickel. Kamzat can take a shot. As he's shown in that Gilbert Burns fight. Bo Nickel, we haven't... We don't really... We don't, he he's taken been, a cobble, maybe, right? Hasn't been tested, yeah. I guess you could say. Tested? I hate when they say they haven't been tested, but we just haven't it's, seen it's him such a, a weird... three-round banger. You yeah, know what I'm we haven't seen him get rocked and recover. I guess you could, you could point out. I think... Which... Real quick, shout out Gilbert Burns for that fucking fight, dude. He's, awesome. He's so sick. That's, that's a good I one to go Gilbert back and watch Burns. if anyone listening is uh, fucking interested. Love Gilbert, Gilbert Burns and Kamzat is a banger. Um, Kamzat versus Bo Nickel, I think it makes sense just because it's like two up-and-coming big names or whatever. I don't I, I don't think that's a bad thing. This is the UFC, right? It's what you sign on. when, like As soon as you get past the Contender Series, 
That's what you sign on for. You can yeah. you can have backroom deals and you can talk to people and you can like try to fight certain people, but at the end of the day, if they want to throw you to what would be considered the wolves, the wolves, yeah, you have to fight your way out. I was of almost that. gonna say something like that, but like there is no getting thrown to the wolves anymore because it's it's the UFC. Everybody's a fucking wolf. Yeah, you know? I, I always like to say that. Like when we're sitting here we're talking, ah, that guy sucks. They only suck within the context of like being the top five percent fighters in the world. You know? I <laughs> typically say a fighter sucks when I personally don't like them. <laughs> how, <laughs> that's would, t- how would I like this guy at a McDonald's at nine a.m.? You know, like <laughs> that's what I say. Like it's it's yeah. I mean, we're all guilty of just saying like, oh, that guy sucks. Like that's he can't. It, it, it is what it is. And yeah, we're talking from couches and whatever. But that's. That's the thing. Like we're, we're it's a sport, so we're allowed it's to hard, talk about though, it like because that. it's a sport. Yes, but it's also something within us. Like a there's instinct. a there's a fucking caveman mm-hmm. in inside. I mean, fucking maybe not everybody the way it's popular some, because some we get be drawn nowadays. But there's like a, we get drawn to knockouts. It is what it is. That's you it. Go, you go to the Super Bowl. We get drawn to, to violence. You got Taylor Swift on stage. Everybody's looking at the fist fight in the bleachers. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, there's there's something to that that whether we like fighting or not, or we like the violence. Like some people, are like oh, it's too violent. We are naturally me. drawn to violence. It is there's, what it is. There's there's jungle law. You know what I mean? Fuck society. Fuck words. Fuck the human. And there is just that the king of the jungle shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that lives within all of us to a certain degree. Some people more than others. And uh, it it just. It culminates in MMA, and that's that's, that's why bare knuckle MMA. As we get fucking back to it's it, a is good the way to thing. spin it too. Is looking at it like nobody would train any type of martial art if you didn't have some sort of primal instinct in you to be like, I just want to be able to control somebody or have one up on somebody, or even you just don't like feeling vulnerable. Like Defense. that, but there are here's the thing though that's really really interesting is in conversations that I've had with people, or maybe you guys, whatever. It's really interesting to see people will be like, why would I ever need to learn how to fight? I don't get in fights. And we've talked about Until you don't. (laughs) Until you get in a fight. It's like these people have had these cushy lives. Maybe they weren't bullied in high school. Normies. You know, uh, if if you're, you're, one, if you weren't bullied in high school, I got to assume you were were the worst person, right? (laughs) Like, (laughs) but... that's it, they don't they don't why would they're like oh I, I i don't have a need for that same reason with a gun it's like i would never need that whatever it's like how comfortable must you live like how comfortable is your life within the confines of america to think that you can have like an open door policy on your house or like not be, there are people that want to hurt you just because they got nothing better to do right there are people out there that want to hurt you because, and they don't even realize it, but they want to expel their anger or their energy. We saw it in that video and the dude with the fucking ice pick. Mm-hmm. The You know what I mean? We came up on that dude that was like, hey, man, calm down. Ice pick. Perfect example of why you should mind your own fucking business. Right. But th- that dude was clearly on one, and he just did it. So you should, you should have something. If you're not going to train martial arts, get a gun. If you don't want to get a gun, carry fucking mace. Something because people are not, very delusional in thinking that the world is an okay place. All that's going to come to an end if you know the lights turn off. That's that's we we Water talk about off. this. We talk about this almost on a regular basis since we've been friends. Everybody much, in this room has been friends. That how much are, you like your neighbors, dude? How much you like them when the power goes out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Our Oh, I'll, 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 I almost said <laughs> <popular movie. laughs> all, <laughs> all, 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 I'm, all I'm saying is, if the lights go off, the street's fucking mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is my kingdom. This is my street. <laughs> this is my street you know, now. It, but how many other people feel like that? How many people? We'll are find sitting, out at the end of the day. How many people are sitting at their house? Like they've never had a hard day in their life. They've never had a fist fight, even. You know, they just did their nine to five. They fucking worked. They've, you know, whatever. They've never had an aggressive interaction that has warranted violence. Either they've been wronged in situations and they've just like, okay, well, talking it out is a better option. I'll be the better person. I'm a bitch. Whatever the, whatever the situation is, never got involved. Well, what happens to the day you walk in the grocery store and somebody's just like, boom, 
and just sorry, holy <laughs> shit, bad. and just um, fucking s- swings at you for no fucking reason, providing yeah. they didn't just knock you out for fun. I've if you're me- still fight, like you got to get out, you got to live, and even beyond that, out. do you not have an inherent need to want to take care of your people? Yep. Your, your lady, your fucking kids, I bet. Your fucking, you know, whoever you're with, your fucking homeboys. It doesn't, there's there's a responsibility you have. And this isn't a male or a female thing. This is an everybody thing. It's yeah. You have a responsibility to your people to not be a liability. Like a tribal thing almost. You know what I mean? I've said this before and I, and I say it a million times. Like, I don't leave the house in any sort of delusion thinking that nothing bad will happen to me. And then my guard is up 100% all the fucking time. Like, I don't know if some if I'm driving down the street and some lunatic decides to cut me off that he decides to choose violence that day and get out of his truck and or pull a gun on me or whatever the case may be. I am in no delusion that when I leave the house that I may be in a some... I may be a target and I may be in some sort of confrontation. Everybody's a victim. It just depends on the day. So... It, or everybody can be a victim. It just depends on the day. But I can hear I can hear the internet talking shit to you. Well, that's just trauma. You need to go to therapy. Da, da, da. Even if it is trauma, it's not Maybe. wrong. Maybe, but like, like yo, I've a... seen I've seen some pretty crazy stuff in in real life. Yeah. And uh, I think we're so here's the here's the thing that we've talked about before. It, it's too, an awareness. We we are, I think, in a weird group of thought because we experience. We've already dis- established that we experience things way differently than other people experience things because we've gone through crazy amounts of shit. That... Do you remember the Sima Park car explosion? <laughs> <laughs> that that actually, I actually think about that. Dude, it was awesome. Like occasionally. Anyway, but allegedly. like we as a group, that's why like I joke around with the term normie. But like I can't talk about the things that we've experienced or that we think are just okay in life with like normal fucking people. I got one for you. Cause yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. You two have been around for my whole life. Like you guys have been 15 plus, you know, whatever, 15 plus years. You guys have normal lives. You, you've worked in car dealerships and mm-hmm. you know, you've done whatever you've done, Steve. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I just I just don't want to get personal, you know. Right. So I just I said whatever. Mm-hmm. But you guys, you have that customer service um, voice, you you know, you know, and uh, I don't, I I don't have that, mm-hmm. you know. I don't like I'm this person all the fucking time. You don't know how to turn it off. Mm-hmm. I don't. Well, one, I don't feel that I should have to. I think other people should, you know, act accordingly. But also, uh, it. I don't. I just don't have it. My I dad taught me it. I was a hothead, but so was my brother, thing? and he said, you got to play the game. When you're at work, you got to play the game. And mm-hmm. that's what it is. That's yeah. how I first learned to frame it. But that's if you're holding on to the anger. like Oh, so, for sure. And I I mean, yeah. ask me how many times I've been written up, all of them. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that, uh, yeah, no, that's Scott your... said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, but that's to your point. Like, we, I just, we are in a weird minority group of like experiences i think no i don't think we're a minority group i think a lot of people deal with that we know in our circles have dealt with a lot of the same traumas that we look at as we're just like whatever you know yeah somebody how many everyone we know is dead or dying dude think about it yeah like go through the list in your head how how are they Mm -hmm. i made it out right you get what i'm saying Yeah, yeah like what so I don't, I, I don't know. I, I was talking to, uh, Jake Dawes, shout out. Uh, and he was, cause he, he like works with kids and he, yeah, like, it's like he's a got, he's got like, ah, he's a good guy to talk to. Yeah. And, uh, he's like, yeah, you, over, you overcome adversity and da, 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 da. And some people just can't do that. And it's like, well, if you took those same people who can't come, overcome whatever adversity that's currently keeping them down. You left them in the woods for two days and they needed to get water or they died. Do you think they'd go get water? No. Yeah, so it's, we, we've we made ourselves so comfortable that I think a lot of people just accept being defeated. And it's like, I never really had the choice to do that. Like, I lucked out in, in my personal life, uh, like, having great friends and speaking, uh, preaching the choir here. But... 
if I if like if my family didn't get the house my grandfather built, you know what I mean? Like I, bro, like the heat wasn't always on and there wasn't always food in it, but there was a roof, you know. So yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. complain about shit, yeah. you know. Um, but not having the structure, not having a, a good structure as a kid, not having things that any of us should have been like wanting to do. Like it's a miracle I don't do like drugs. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like. If I did fucking meth, dude, like, but it would be know? fitting. You know and, what I mean? And that's uh, that's probably the biggest reason I don't do it because everybody looks at me and they're like, "That's a that's a fucking that's fucking junkie. fucked up." That's yeah. that dude's a fucking this. That dude's, and it's like I've kind of lived my whole life in spite of that. Like, fuck you, you know. Um, but look at everybody else around us, and it, they can't escape the traumas of this town. It's like towning trauma, or this, or just our area. But that is not a minority. That's every single friend group in every single mm-hmm. block, in every single hood, at every single level. Yeah. I Mostly. Get, <laughs> I get sincerely shocked if I accidentally say some shit that I know is that I can safely say in the friend group. Yeah. yeah. But I say it to somebody not thinking about it, but it just comes out, right? My personality just comes out and I say some shit. And then, like, when they don't, look at me weird and they're like okay with what i said and they joke around it too and i'm like oh shit like yo there's some yo people or maybe (sighs) i'm just delusional and thinking that there's not more of us out there no i mean there definitely are it's just people choose the easy way out i think it's i think it's kind of like a hardcore kid mentality i don't think it's just like our area i think it's just you you trauma mentality i'm i'm uh no not trauma mentality more so you just uh, you you can overcome shit mm-hmm. because there's no other choice. You don't have a choice. Yeah, like I don't. It's either it's either you do the thing that keeps you afloat, whatever that may be, or you sink. And a lot of people sink. Most people we know sunk. sink. Yeah, or and are or are sinking or are lack of a better term fighting with sinking. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. So treading. Yeah, and it's like they're going to hear this and I'm going to get DMs and I'm going to get fucking texts and they're going to go unanswered, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, it's I just don't funny. give a fuck what you're doing, man. Like, I just find it humorous that, like... I haven't if, seen you since high school. Put my fucking nuggets in the bag, bro. Dude, <laughs> that's, that's the best thing is you're... That, like, when you finally were just like, this is how I handle people now, when you were just like... I know you, but I don't need to know you anymore. Like, I I flipped that switch, too, when you started saying that. And I just, like, there's certain people that I've talked to since that, like, mentality has, like, unfolded. And I'm just like, you know, I'm I'm good. And just, like, just erase their existence in my life. And for the next two or three months, you hear how they're talking shit about you. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I am... F- like I've had anxiety my entire life, and I just assume that somebody I've met thirty seconds ago is talking shit about me for every day for the rest of their lives. Like that's just that's, that's, that's just the thing. No. That, <laughs> but but that's just the thing anyway. So I am fully aware that's ego, that that's you talking shit to yourself. Yeah, yeah that too. That's yeah, that's that hundred um, percent. That too. But dude, it's just, and I don't, dude, I don't think we've had that hard of lives. Like it, quite frankly, like, I don't only speak for me. Like I've overcame some bullshit, whatever. But there are people out there, fucking people in the congo salt mines build iphones like I am bro in, there's yeah. so much going on like if you can't get out of bed because you're depressed and whatever you're a loser you would have died a couple of years ago yeah fucking 20 30 years ago like they had to put you somewhere because you're not being productive to society and it's like well that's not a good mentality to go back to you have to do something you have to not you can't just fucking be complacent the human mechanism doesn't work that way when you just sit around and not to mention we're pumping our shit full of chemicals even if you eat healthy unless you grow it yourself i'm pretty yeah right sip up mm. coca you know whatever sugar anything drinks coca cola that's Coca-Cola. luxurious anything uh, that's not grown naturally or water t- so those chemicals like go bad. into your body if and their hormones too. They're they're digestible hormones too, and microplastics and yada yada yada. Those chemicals change your brain, and over time, besides the fact that it's going to change your body, and then when your body starts to look not so appealing, regardless of what your fucking internet is telling you, 
your bo- your mind and your body, they start to fucking work together and you start to feel like shit and you need to do something. You can't like, and people want to use their traumas as a way to just, well, I, I can't do that because I have this. It's like, no, you're just a fucking useless waste of space, yeah. dude. Like, the just fucking people, do it. The thing that like the general public doesn't understand is that because it is as simple as just do it it really, it really fucking is, is. The, for most for there most. are some extreme cases but for most but the people are just so stuck in their own shit because they're always looking for i want i i want it it's not as simple as just saying people are looking for excuses i just think as people are it's ingrained so, in the culture it's ingrained in the culture and they're also people don't understand that it is as simple as just do something different that day that you normally do. You know what I mean? Just do one thing different and then it, it kind of makes a shift, you know? Like, I am in no delusion that, kind of like what we were saying is, I grew up thinking I had a terrible fucking life mm. and that I had all this shit going on and like not having a father figure and all this crazy shit that I thought was terrible growing up. Mm-hmm. But me as an adult realizing that I had a pretty fucking outstanding life in yeah. all things considered of me being homeless and like living in the back of a car at certain points in my life but <laughs> shout out <laughs> shout out um but in all things considered i'm okay i have a house now i'm fine because i figured and it you don't out. want to go back there right that's the entire that's the exact thing that i tell people is i thought i had a terrible life but me being an adult and who i am now is realizing that i realized that my life wasn't all that bad but I made a decision to not take any back steps. And that's why I'm doing fine now. And like, I'm good with what I have. Like, yeah, there's always the drive to like, yeah, I want more, obviously. But I would love a G Wagon. Yeah, that would be dope. <laughs> that would be sick. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I have a house. I yeah. have kind of health. But you know what I mean? <laughs> like, You're alive. For I'm sure. alive. You're I'm, definitely living. I'm hanging on. But like, but I'm not. You know, I I have it pretty fucking good, and I'm in no yeah. delusion thinking that like whatever bad things happen to me or the health issues that I do currently have, I am in way better position than 99 percent of the world. Yeah, for sure, and that's you know whether it's because you live in America or not, it's still just it's true. You know, mm-hmm. you people that uh victim mentality, you know, everybody's a fucking victim type shit. What does it get you at the end of the day, even if you're like? They're like, okay, you're right. You're valid. Your trauma happened to you, that whatever it is, or you went through something and uh, that happened and cool. What are you doing? What are, what are you doing with it? Like, use it as a fire to fucking fuel never having to feel that way again, whatever the hell it is. You don't ever want to feel broke again. I bet, I bet you're not going to fuck up your job. I bet you're not going to fuck your money up. Or even beyond that, if you do get fired or something, you'll find a way to adapt and overcome because you've had to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, my, that's essentially my driving force is just saying I, do, I just don't want to do that again. So I'm, I I'm just gonna... refuse to be a victim of life. <laughs> it's very and I also do it. I live, out of, <coughs> I live out on pure spite. Like, I don't actively think about it, but every move I make is, like, a fucking fuck you to everybody I yeah. used to know. And it's, like, uh, I, when I was a fat bitch, I basically was <laughs> – I basically woke up one day and I was, like, people expect me to be a fat bitch. Mm. I'm done. Done. <laughs> you know? Done that, being like, a fat bitch. Like, oh, oh, you think I can't get up the stairs without, you know – Breathing heavy, you're right. I'm gonna change it, yeah. <laughs> and then well, I did. It's another point of that is we look the way we look, right? Not so much Steve, but we look the way we look, and we're automatically assumed that we're just fucking, you know, wrecks. I don't right? understand that. The fucking like, there's a different like. You see somebody with tattoos. I don't look at somebody with tattoos as you're a threat. I don't look at you as like, oh, you're tough because you did a thousand hours under an, an, a tattoo gun. You're not stressful. You're not anything. You're somebody who just went and got a tattoo and that fucking doesn't concern me at all. I think that's there's changing. different types of tattoos, yeah. but I don't understand. I don't understand the, uh, the, like you walk in with neck tattoos. People feel uneasy about that. That's changing for sure. Because we're going to have doctors with face tattoos. I think at some point, 
nurses and, and hand tattoos and shit. Yeah, so I think that's not going to be a thing long term, but I just think it's the generational thing. Like, once that generational thing passes, it's not going to be as a heavy as a stereotype. While it doesn't matter, I got to tell you, I don't know if I want some eyebrow rocker on my doctor. I just, yeah. You know what I mean? What does like, it I, say? Yeah, yeah, that's a very important thing. I just, and I say that looking like shit you know what i mean so i, well, that's I get a, it that's but. the funny thing like i've been looked at in corporate but world. i don't think it i don't think people should look down on you for it just like you know okay well that's the thing like people have but i've also proven them that they're idiots because i've been a manager everywhere i fucking worked essentially and i've actually you know what that's true since i've known yeah. you you've you just be a manager. I just be everywhere. a manager. <laughs> yeah. I just I just be running shit. <laughs> your um, your resume is just I'm a manager. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a manager. <laughs> I'm gonna it. erase my entire Management resume and just material. put manager. <laughs> but like I have neck tattoos and shit like that. I have sat in front of literal like millionaires that run comp that has run a company that I've worked in, and then he's like, "Well, you have like neck neck tattoos too, but you're still in this room." Like they respectfully were like, "You have neck tattoos. You still work for the company. And you're a very valuable asset to this company." I've had people that actually matter. Which is weird. Tell me that. To say that. Yeah. Because, like, bro. That's kind of backhanded. It, no, it 100%. Uh, yeah, 100%. Is, they don't necessarily, I mean, probably they don't mean it that way. But that's that goes back to what I was saying fucking but six they, podcasts ago. Yeah. People don't understand what they're saying. They don't realize how condescending or sarcastic or fucking arrogant they are. That's, why am I being talked to about art that is physically attached to me? That's like me saying... You're sitting in the room. You know, you got a fucking... You bitch. Some sh- you, got, you got jeans on, but you're still here. You and like, your, it doesn't fucking matter. You and your white socks. Yeah, like, you know, like, <laughs> it's just stupid, man. And it, But it, it's a funny thing. Like, I, people, but at the same time, how many times have you seen shit bags that look like shit Like bags? shit bags. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's... I, it's just how you carry yourself. I carry myself like a fucking manager when I go into work. Your shit all, shit. The way your neck and beard line up, too. You you think I don't notice, but the way it fucking covers it, dude. You get it a little is. button up, dude. So you I strategically. It. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, <laughs> dude, look, I, I ain't faking got, the fucking gangster over there. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I strategically did that, and I purposely told people that, and they're like, oh, I didn't know you had like full sleeves and everything. And I'm like, well, the reason being is because I got my right sleeve up a little bit because I shake people's hands with my right hand. Yeah. So I wanted to even know that slid up a a little bit hide the fact that i am completely covered from the neck down i was at a wedding and uh and first of all fucking yikes right automatically i'm annoyed i'm at a wedding because it's not like my homie's wedding it's fucking just some wedding before you get into that <laughs> you being who you are you've been to way more weddings than like you should have been it, don't <laughs> dude don't like, fucking invite me like <laughs> Like I'm happy for you. Hey, it's just good funny job. that you've been at I more hope it weddings works than you should have been at. You know, but uh, it's yeah, it's any any gathering like that, like outside of a show, is just not my thing. You know. Yeah. But you know, I go because everybody tells me I'm a it's fucking respect- dickhead if I don't respectful so, and whatever. But anyway, I'm at this fucking me this this wedding, and I'm 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 with my lady, and <laughs> this is a guy. He's just talking. He's like. He's got like tattoos, like whatever. He's like, yeah, I want to, I want to get, you know, my head or my hands, but you know, I just, I, I work in the corporate world, so I'm like, okay, so what's that mean? Now, mind you, his girlfriend has like a hand tattoo, right? Yeah. So he's kind of speaking out of pocket. I don't know what she did, but kind of speaking out of turn. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, I just, you know, I, I work in the corporate world, as if that's a sentence with substance. Say, what does that mean? Nothing. So, it, so you're living your one life. By the rules and viewpoints of people that you work with, are you good at your job? And this is a conversation I actually had with him. Mm-hmm. Like I, I had this conversation with this dude. He's like, "Yeah, I'm good at my job," and he couldn't even see what I was leading to. Like he was just yeah. that. It was so flabbergasting to him that I, I had, the, and he had tattoos. Right, just so it nothing was like, showing. Why would you ever live your life that way? Why <laughs> would you ever keep yourself down? Even if it's not that big, like, you're just not getting a tattoo. It's not keeping yourself down. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah, Why yeah. would you ever live your life for someone else's fucking bullshit like that? Like, oh, your office job says you can't have color on your fucking hand, skin, fucking ink pigment? Suck a dick. Yeah. I'm just going to go do this job somewhere else. I've actually had people tell me, be like, I wish I could get neck tattoos like you, but with my job. I'm like, that's an insult. And I'm that's like, a fucking, that's an insult. I was like, but here's the thing, like. 
me with the career background that I've had is I've had to wear a suit and tie to work for many, many years yeah. and still had neck tattoos. And yeah. but people can see them. I can't fully hide it. Like, that's the thing. I can't yeah. fully hide them. Um, I tried my best to make sure it's not just like, hey, this is what I have. You also, but, you're not stupid. Yeah. Okay. You know how to transition jobs. You've got to do some resume. You know, you've been fairly responsible, at least to a certain extent, since I've known you. So it really doesn't matter that you have neck and hand or neck tattoos, whatever, Mm -hmm. because you carry yourself a certain way. And whatever job you're going in to do, you can either bullshit it enough or you actually know how to do it. So you're going to get it done. I'm referencing um, Family Dollar, by the way. (laughs) 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 Um, So it doesn't matter. But a lot of people think you can just have a bunch of face tattoos and hand tattoos and like People, they're going to look at you because it's different from what normal people. If you have tattoos, people are going to... And this is something I struggle with. It's like, I don't want to be, like, looked at. I don't have tattoos necessarily to be, like, gawked at. I just, like, I like it and I like right. this better than whatever. So, but it's a little bit you have to take. Like, if you go out dressed a certain way and you've got a lot of show... It's just something you have to it's fucking deal yeah. with. But it shouldn't... I don't understand the, like, judgment of it. Like, it's not the fucking... 60s anymore it's you know 2024 and also you can tell different types of tattoos like i can look at a guy who's got a tattoo and i'm like okay you've been somewhere yeah yeah, i know what kind of person you are because a lot it's war paint it's tribal paint like you carry you carry yourself a certain those tattoos like military or whatever yeah it doesn't even have to be a sketchy tattoo it can be military tattoo you they got the crest it's weird how you can just tell right like it doesn't even matter like what the tattoo is yeah it doesn't even matter like what the tattoo is you can just tell like i don't know where or or what it looks like that like you know yeah but a lot of people don't know that you know like a lot of people are so arrogantly clueless like in or maybe not arrogant maybe that's the right word but just clueless on how shit works in the actual real like world of consequences and like reactions that they they just look at a tattoo as a tattoo and it's it never you know what i mean a, a tattoo done in a shop a 60 dollar 80 dollar flash piece is not the same thing you got upstate you know yeah. it not only does it look different whether it's good quality or not not only does it look different it just it it's on a different kind of person yeah know? yeah so that goes back to what I'm saying. Just because you're covered in tattoos, that doesn't mean anything to me. More so, if I see you covered in tattoos, I'm like, God, this guy's fucking annoying. I don't want it. To, I hope I don't have to interact with this person. Because that's what the conversation's going to be about. Let's get this on record. Here's a grievance. Tattooed people don't want to talk about tattoos. Yeah. If you're like, if you're the kind of person who counts your tattoos, you're, n- you're not the tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it, okay. You have a couple of tattoos. You got them to show them off. You, you, whatever, whatever. I get that, but I'm not in the gas station trying to have a conversation about my ink, bro. Right. Like, just don't even, don't do. It. And girls, especially, don't want to do it. Dudes, do not comment on women's tattoos out in public. It's weird. It is find weird. find a different approach if you must bother them. Mm. But <laughs> like, it, you can't. It's not it's not a good conversation piece. It's not a good conversation piece on fucking Tinder. It's not a good conversation piece at all. It's just like low bar. It's, don't, it's a, not for you. Yeah, it's a thing for me, so don't How many don't No, talk. not even that. I mean, yeah, I get that. But like how many tattoos do you have? When you Does it matter? When you see somebody who's got a visible amount of tattoos. Not somebody who just has a sleeve, even though that's a lot of tattoo. But just like Random. They're they're really covered neck head hands fucking you know maybe face whatever, yeah. whatever. someone who's more than just kind of tattooed asking that question is like you didn't even think you just like oh tattoo how many <laughs> like you didn't you, even think there anything. was no filtering process yeah, you, just you just saw just, it and talked and in a way okay maybe it's uh, uh, someone you're attracted to trying to talk to you right. type shit I get that I get all that but don't accost me in a gas station or a CVS about my hand tattoo or talk at the back of my head saying, yeah, I got tattoos too, because that's happened to me. Mm. It's like, why are you talking at me, first of all? The, <laughs> like, know what conversation that I'm tired of having to is with people with tattoos are talking and they're like, which one hurt the worst? That's another low bar question. It's like, bro, they all hurt. I don't care what it was. It was like, it's oh, not I, fun. Ink therapy. I love it. It fucking whatever. I fell asleep. 
there are times when you can fall asleep. There are spots that, like, if you're fucking tired enough or stoned, you can fall asleep. They all hurt. Stop People lying. People are just being tough guys about it. They all hurt. They're all annoying. It's it's like dragging a fucking hot butter knife over yourself until you get the desired color. Yeah. It sucks. I, <laughs> like, I can personally say what spot sucked the worst, but none of it was fun. Yeah. So and like, that's not a conversation I want to have with any really random stranger. Because yeah. it's never, like... If you're, if why you're is the point asking? of it? To what end? Yeah, like, why are we even talking? Like, I'm not... I'm not going to be rude to somebody, but, like, why say that? Like, I, as someone who has a lot of tattoos, wouldn't look at somebody else with a lot of tattoos and punish them with that question, or the, that line of questioning, because I should know it. Yes, tattoos hurt. I have them. I <laughs> So, like, even if you have one tattoo, you got something on your arm, or you got a little name on your neck, or cool. you got fucking... You know that that little experience sucked. You know, like, yeah. it just it, okay, it was only 20 minutes and it wasn't that bad. Sure. But now elongate that over a thousand hours on your fucking yeah. nipple, your armpit. The general, the general public just needs chin. to stop lying and just say like, oh, it didn't affect me at all. That's just fucking. Yeah. Peacocking. Yeah. Peacocking. Yeah. It's like, cause girls get tattooed too and they know it hurts too. So there's yeah, really right. no point to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, what do you say? It's, it's not a, f- like if. Hey, did your head tattoo hurt? Motherfucker. Yes. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Not right now. Yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't I'm, hurt I'm right out. now. But I've, uh, what I like to do is when people say shit like that, I've, I've been like, I'm, what do you what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm, I'm not tattooed. I don't yeah. care what you're saying. And they're like, what? Like, yeah. no, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. T- I don't know what you're Nothing. talking about. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't know. I've been approached in a, in a convenience store before, and I was wearing all black. And the guy was just like, oh, don't rob the place. That's weird too. That like, why did you need? Why did you need to comment? It was an older guy it's an too. Anxiety. Like, why did They're you need to comment on what I'm wearing like that is. to a, an absolute stranger? For all you know, that could have been the one thing to make me snap. That goes back to that fucking ice pick, dude. Yeah, mind your business. Yeah, but and like, even if you are getting robbed, if you don't own that store, mind your fucking business because you want to lose your life over two hundred and fifty dollars in fucking scratches that yeah. they're gonna get caught with anyway. Yeah, like. Just be like, hey, man, cool. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You want the safe code? Go ahead. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> Like, because it's, it's, it's not, not worth fucking, it. It's not fucking worth it. And to, people are friendly. People want to talk. But, like, why try to be social in places that being social is not like, like, no loitering, dude. You know what I mean? So why are we having a conversation about my tattoos in Walgreens? <clears throat> like, I just, I just, yeah. it fucking flabbergasts me because, like, I wouldn't do this to people. Yeah. Like, it, it and it doesn't have to be anything. If I never got talked to in public ever again, that would be the be, greatest. Beyond, like, courteous, like, hey, man, what's up? Thank you, question. Thank you. Hey, is it in this aisle? Cool, appreciate you. Pump, yeah. got 20 on five. Shit like that, fine. But, like, just random strangers interacting for fun? I don't... No, I, no thank you. I don't get it. <laughs> no, I don't. thank you. If <laughs> like, I'm... Yeah, no thanks. If, like, it's different if, You ever like, seen a dude, like, have no idea how out of pocket he is, and he was just, like hitting on a cashier mm, yeah and it's like what a level of entitlement dude like i understand like people the mating ritual you know you want to attract fucking you're trying to talk to people i get all that but there's a time and place when you have somebody in a situation where they're compelled to be nice because they don't want to lose their job of of any sex they're compelled to be nice to because they don't want to lose their job and they're physically trapped at the station dealing with you, you should not be fucking hurling game. Like, what, hitting why on, are you slinging dick at the fucking gas station? Like hitting on Let's, waitresses? They, what's that meme? It's like, the strippers don't love you, they just are paid to be nice to you, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And it's like, especially outside of a strip club, like a waitress or something like that, it's not... These girls are just trying to get through their fucking... Or these guys, anybody, it doesn't matter, they're just trying to get through their shift. There's some eye contact, there's a sign, there's something like that. Okay, sure. But a lot of dudes take that sentence I just said right there and they just apply it to everything like it's always happened in every interaction and they just, they're fucking, they're, it's right swiping everybody. It's that's, just fucking trying. That's the where's my hug guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you've ever, like, let's put that on record. If you've ever been the where's my hug guy, you don't that, need to exist. Dude, where are they now? Because I know there's I don't new care. ones in every generation. <laughs> because here's the, the where's my hug guys are the chain smoking dudes with like 
At the time, it would have been like a 98 Maxima, the Cookie Monster hat from Spencer's on the side, mm. the 5X shirt. It's not a white shirt, and if it is, it's stained. <laughs> wearing it's like a, a, wearing a 5X shirt. shirt where you should be wearing a schmedium. And the fucking 15-year-old girl's got to go back to the movies to get pick up. Where's my hug? That's the where's my hug guy. <laughs> the where where's my now? hug guy just doesn't Prison. need to exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of them work. No, they're getting worse. It's incels mm. and shit. It's yeah. getting worse. Yeah. But. I mean, you're supposed to talk to people. I get it. Like, you want to, oh, a girl's cute. I would like to. Where's my hook? Talk to her. But th- <laughs> these dudes have such, they have such, a, you're not entitled to conversation. We've already done this conversation. You're not entitled to a conversation with the person. So beyond a reasonable attempt, beyond a reasonable compliment or a, you look nice today, see you later. Like, interaction, like, you're you're out of bounds. You're out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And even then you're you're kind of like they're not signed up for that, you know? You you should really make sure the person is uh like, "Hey, I'm giving you a signal like I want to flirt with you a little bit." But that's not how it goes. You get like some boomer in the line in the line and he's like she tur- she'll like turn around, he'll like eye her up and down. It's like, "Bro, not now." <laughs> and then he'll look at I got you. ice cream melting right here. And yeah, and they'll look at me for confirmation like I'm Thinking it's awesome that they're fucking checking no. out this 20-year-old cashier. And it's we like, think you should be on a watch list. It's like, bro, my ice cream is melting. If you want to make it to your car with fucking uh, kneecaps, hungry. get, move. <laughs> I can say, you know, you get, don't get between Lee and ice cream. Dude, That's a bad recipe. I, dude, I don't fuck around when it comes to frozen dairy. Yeah. <laughs> don't play with me. I don't fuck around. Because I'm, I'm one of the few adults, like I'm in that percentage that can handle full-on dairy as an adult. Because uh, I'm unkillable. Steve's jealous. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude, ice cream's all. Dude, it's getting to be ice cream season. Let's talk mm-hmm. about that. Where's the first ice cream social going to be? Where's the best? Okay, there we go. There's a fucking hard lore style question for you. Mm. Where's the best ice cream? What is the best ice cream? Like, are we talking about flavor or style? This is, this is, this is a deep conversation. Mm. Best is subjective. This is... Okay. So, all right. Dick you gotta, you gotta right. define your scope. <laughs> I will say... Flavor wise, hang on. We talk in restaurant and or parlor. We talk in grocery store. Then we can talk about brands if we're talking grocery store. And are we talking about as Steve brought up, uh, hard or soft? Hard. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be hard. Got to be right? hard. Yeah. <laughs> hard. H o o o r d. Cookie dough. Is that a subjective everywhere cookie dough? Like you could go to like I could go anywhere, yeah. any style, any brand cookie dough. So that's dough. what we're talking about. Like however, the cheese pizza of ice cream. That's yeah. what you're doing right now. Okay, cookie dough is my go-to no matter what. But I will say I don't mess with any of like the low sugar, anything like no, that. You're like not a that's the that's the only cookie dough that's trash because it's not real cookie dough, even though it's all no all real cookie dough. Whatever. However. <laughs> It's not the real fake cookie dough that I want. Soft, <laughs> hard. So, what the fuck did what the fuck did you just say? Soft, 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 hard, anywhere, style, brand, restaurant, non-restaurant, gas station, cookie dough. Cookie dough. I wish more, one. I wish they made all flavors and soft serve. Like I wish I could go somewhere and be like, I want a to use a Ben and Jerry's flavor. Give me s'more soft serve. Fuck you. That'd be crazy, right? <laughs> dude, fuck. how fucking that don't off. Oh, how fucking horny I'll say is that, something. Dude? And I'm not sorry to say it. Oh, here we fuck oh, it. Fuck I don't want to fuck you. Toothpaste bullshit. Go ahead, go. Mint. Ah. delicious. Mint flavored ice cream. Dog water. Here's the thing. Not sorry, Steve. It is kind of <laughs> like brushing your teeth. But I think there's some nuance in it and I think that's not an ice cream you can just get anywhere. Mint chocolate chip is not an like, and it's not an ice cream in my opinion that you can get a fucking boat of. It's like a small occasion. If it's if you so, it, it's like a box of Junior Mints. They're very refreshing, but you only want one box. I'd be lying to say if I didn't have a good chocolate chip mint ice cream. You like shamrock at, shakes? At, it, that's what I'm getting at. Those so, are. That's not even. It's just. It's not mint. real. It is. It is <laughs> mint flavored, but I will say that might actually be toothpaste. It, it might actually, but so I got. What I'll say is, I've had a good, I've had a good chocolate chip mint ice cream before, mm-hmm. but it will never be something that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try that. No, I agree. 
It's not never a, ever. Like it's all right. Like every now and then. Like if someone gets it, I'll, I'll give me a little spoonful. You know yeah, what I mean? I'll even but, uh, go just plain chocolate or plain vanilla before I go. Oh, dude, mint. Here's and this shocks people when I go out to ice cream with them. A soft serve cone, cho- chocolate sprinkles, is a powerful, powerful combo. Powerful ice cream. Mm. Uh, but cookie dough is, is a staple. Like if you're going hard ice cream, cookie dough is good. Um, see, I never go out. I never go out for ice cream. Like I, I hardly ever go to like friendlies or like a small, you know, what's over here, mm. the, the spots that are over here. I know I never, I never do that. It's just, I don't know. You got to keep it simple. Got to keep it simple. And this is a tougher that's, question than I thought. <clears throat> you got anything that's too like over the top with like the crazy flavors is just not worth it. Is this a New England thing or can I get moose tracks pretty much anywhere? Bro. Can you? Moose tracks rules and So I'm pretty sure you I I've seen moose tracks out in the wild, not just in New England. Here's mm-hmm. a slippery that one too. I've like people ick at the fact that like mint chocolate is like a thing, right? Like yeah. I do. People really have a thing against coffee flavored ice cream. As someone who doesn't like coffee, I get that. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm, I've never drank. Do you coffee. have to enjoy like coffee it. to enjoy coffee ice cream, or can you just enjoy coffee ice cream for what it is? Yeah, I can. I can have a coffee. I go ahead, Steve. Oh, I was gonna say, I actually coffee ice cream got me to tolerate coffee. I guess. Mm. Well, for example, I'm. I enjoy, you know, a, a spoonful of tiramisu, but I don't like coffee. The, yeah. the non-alcoholic tiramisu. The non-alcoholic uh, the, tiramisu, you know, yeah. Shout out Pizza King. Uh, um, this probably won't work. But that has a coffee taste, right? handing you my phone, but uh, I bought that off of that Instagram ad. Moose Tracks ice cream beanie. <laughs> it was too funny for 25 bucks. <laughs> so what's, anyway. what's the most? <laughs> yeah, so my go-to, no matter what, cookie dough everywhere, hoard. See if I'm go out, I would. Uh, I'm a milkshake and or a soft serve guy. Believe it or not, you remember the time an Oreo milk. Let's talk about unfuckwithable ice cream. Is an Oreo milkshake? Yeah, as thick as it can be made. Goated. I'm talking. It's basically just it. it fuck a splash of milk. Okay, yeah. uh, blended ice cream, melted, almost melted ice cream. It's Oreo. uncontested. It's the, if I cut. It's the Popeyes of ice cream. Yeah. I was just wait, wait hold on. Say, hold up. My go-to flavor. Wait, you just say the Popeyes. Oh no, I wanted to argue about this. Let's go. You you did that on purpose. Oh, I did. The Popeyes of ice cream is obviously Chick Fil A. You like Chick Fil A over Chick Fil A is way better than you Popeyes. Uncultured swine person. Chick Fil A doesn't give me a soaked grease bun with my chicken sandwich. Okay, that's that's a locational grievance. <laughs> <laughs> you can't no, take that dude. out on the Louisiana kitchen as a whole, dude. dude. <laughs> I no, I'm not saying that Popeyes is not a good place. I love Popeyes. Hang I on. have to refrain from getting Popeyes every day, but because <laughs> well, it's then here, my argument seals itself. No, your honor, no, 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 no. Because I don't have a Chick Fil A in town. I have a Popeyes in town. What do you get? Convenience. Are we talking chicken fa- sandwich for chicken sandwich? Because you're going to lose this argument. If you're talking other items, I'll listen to it. No, I'm talking about strictly just chicken sandwich. No, man. Chick-fil-A nope. wins every time. Nope. Mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A, chicken sandwich, grilled? That's what you're saying? Or are you talking, right? Their regular chicken sandwich is the like deep, a fried crisp chicken. Okay. Yeah, the crispy. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know if the you crispiness. were grilled. Yeah, no, I know that. No way. Yeah. No way that touches the spicy from Popeye's. Are we mm-hmm. talking chicken no, no, no. chicken or whole sandwich? Whole sandwich. Whole, whole sandwich. bite. Pickle, spice, sauce. I don't fuck with pickles. He doesn't fuck with mayo but either. But do you understand why the pickle is on the sandwich for the to provide acidity? Yes, of the I do. Spices for your palate. I understand oh, that. I, I haven't wrapped my head around it. I asked for no you're pickles. so un- you're it. so ungovernable. You can't have a bite of pickle. <laughs> That's not what I said. I don't like the vinegary. Like, no, I asked for no yeah. pickles too. I can't. I can't fuck with pickles. God, but when you guys listen, here's what you don't understand. I accept <laughs> that I'm altering it in but changing the taste of. You're altering, you're altering mathematics. These fucking f- sandwiches, like a McDouble that has the two fucking pickles on it, have been chemically formulated and altered to They've been chemi- excite test- taste buds. They've been chemically wrong. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> like pickles either, but if it's on a sandwich, I just don't take it apart. You know? I, I'm, I'm almost like Steve with, is with mayo, that if pickles are on my sandwich, even if they're picked off and I taste the leftoverness of the pickle, 
I it's a huge turnoff for me, and it ruins the sandwich. It, now, so you don't like a Big Mac pizza then? No. Hmm. I don't fuck with pickles in any facet. I also haven't. What tried about a cucumber? In at least I a fuck decade. with cucumbers. Hard. That's Cumbers? a fucking pickle. The no, vinegar. It isn't. It's the vinegary. It's the vinegar. Yeah. Whatever, <laughs> dude. It's, it's, it's a, a fucking pickle in a bath, dude. If it's it was, a pickle. if it people, the, the, all right. Here's the thing, right? If people make the comparison, and be like, it's just a cucumber. If it was just a cucumber, it would be called a vinegar cucumber. No, it's just a cucumber until it becomes a pickle. But it's still, dude, you're not. It is no longer a cucumber because it's now called a pickle. Okay, it's not the hang same on, food. On, That's on, semantics. On, if you took a human being and put them in liquid, would they still be a human being even though they are pickled? But yes or no? No, fuck that. Yes or no? Hold yes on. or no? Wait, are we talking fully fermented human? I'm Is just it? trying to take away the the I'd call variable of a cu- yeah the variable of a. Cu- I'm not doing a trick question. I'm saying the variable of a cucumber. Like, okay, you don't want to call a cucumber a pickle, even though it's just it a, is a pickle. It's cucumber. a pre-soaked pickle. Yeah, it's the pre-soaked. It's pickle. a soaked pickle. It's a dry vinegar. pickle. So the problem is, I don't like vinegar. You're racist against pickles. Mm. <laughs> 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 I don't like my cucumbers being tampered with. I'm a fan. But I also will not put a cucumber on a burger, so I get that. Oh, well, see, no, I disagree. I You're going to put a cucumber on a so burger? Here's the thing. Yeah, a little, Hang on. Here's a power move. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Oh, Chris? so you get the crunch from the outside, but you also kind of get the, like, soggy vegetable from uh, the tomato. Like like a tomato. So it's kind of giving you a two for Let me simplify it for you. It replaces the lettuce. It's salad, bro. Mm. You can put the lettuce on there for aesthetics, but what you want, okay. what you want from lettuce, you're not fully getting. I don't care what anybody says. If the sandwich has been made for more than 35 seconds, that lettuce is soft. Whether it's chopped, romaine, whatever the fuck, it's not giving it to you. Put on a burger. Put a fucking four thinly sliced cucumbers. However, however, whatever you like. Mint. It's just it's the crunch, it's the water, and it's not an uh, aggressive taste. That is a good comparison. Like that's a that's a good alternative. I can fuck with that. Well, I wouldn't want four pickles on my burger, but if the burger from the place I was ordering came with pickles on it, I wouldn't fuck like from a place like McDonald's or Popeyes or something like that. I wouldn't fuck with it because I know that there are scientists in a lab formulating this to make it pop on my taste buds in this concoction. Mm-hmm. So when you take that away, you kind of ruin the experience of that. Obviously, you like it more. That's fine, but it, it's. You're not you're not doing it you're not you're not doing it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Can I also just throw this as a sidebar? Is the people that make enjoying pickles like their personality need to go away? <laughs> <laughs> like nobody enjoys a like you can't enjoy a pickle that much that you have to wear a sweater. I don't with know, a side a is side this about pickle crunch, dude? What, is she a love pickles? Or Yo, what? on her Instagram yesterday I saw her selling her new pickle brand and her shirt just said i love jesus and pickles how can you have a pickle brand when selling it's just her a, new pickles it's just a cuc- crazy Wait, how can you have like a pickle brand when it's just a cucumber and vinegar like what what can you do different there different flavors so now you admit it no don't fuck with my cucumbers <laughs> don't fuck with my cucumbers i'll put cucumbers on, on salad and whatever dill Maybe. pickles do you think dill what what is dill to you yuck yeah i'm not a big fan of a dill Wait, what's the difference? But you between understand a dill it's not a brand. They, no, co- no, pickles got different. Dill tastes. is an ingredient, so like a dill pickle is different than like a whatever the fuck. But does it other still? Pickle. But if you taste a dill pickle, you're still like that's a pickle. Yeah, but it's like a sweeter. But it's got the dill flavor because dill is what an herb or something. So for example, they got different flavors of Oreos, right? Not all Oreos taste the same. It's Lemon. same idea. Mm. Same idea. What? <laughs> Kidding. Okay, Jesus. Man. You're not kidding. You love lemon flavored shit. Shut the fuck I up. I love lemon flavored shit. You're fucking, you're full of shit. I buy lemon Oreos, yes. Dude, you hate yourself. All I'm saying is you shed the light. Uh, that is Oreos when you showed me the dark chocolate Oh, that's, Oreo. it's unfuckwithable. I, oh, yeah. let me tell you what I did today. Okay. Oh, here we go. Before I took mushrooms. I, <laughs> I made a peanut butter sandwich. Like, peanut butter, right? And I use, um... Dave's Killer Bread or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. W- <laughs> the protein bread. Listen, I, Sorry. Let's, let's be real about it. It's it's like eating seasoned cardboard. It's not it's, good. It's, it's a little thick. They're, oh, the bread itself, meh. Yeah, but it's Their a good bagels vessel. and English muffins are really good. So anyway, I peanut buttered those. I put four uh, Oreos per sandwich, like dark chocolate Oreos, and then a banana, and I completed the sandwich. And I housed two of those with about 700 calories of uh, whole milk. 
And then I immediately went to sleep. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. And when I texted you, when I was like, yo, I took mushrooms, I don't know, like whatever, I was in and out of that like powerful meal sleep. <laughs> yeah, I was that, like, that I was power. like sleeping on my, <laughs> like, I'm having that is powerful. in March. <laughs> yeah. I respect the power in that. Dude, a, a peanut butter Oreo uh, banana sandwich is crazy. It's, that's Wait, a New England thing. One more time? Peanut did you miss that whole fucking thing? <clears throat> Bitch, I might have. What are we paying you? What are you doing over there? <laughs> what are we paying you for? <laughs> no, I didn't hear you say that there was Oreos in the I see you on fucking Tinder. Sandwich. I know what you're about. It's not dude. Tinder. It's Discord. Um, Yo. Peanut butter, dark chocolate Oreos, banana, sandwich. It's it's devastating. Okay. It's okay. a lot of food. It's devastating. Well, like, well, dude, that 26 gram protein bread and you're eating four of them and then eight dark chocolate Oreos and a full banana. You could even do two bananas if you want to be a crazy Oh, again, fucking frisky. Yeah. And then... You won't drink milk because your body is a calorie. Oh, no. But your body is a calorie. No, a calorie. <laughs> oh, I thought you said your body is a calorie, and I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Oh, What's shit. your favorite ice cream, Steve? That you can't drink? I was gonna say Oreo. He was gonna say lemon mint. Oreo is, I think, or uh, that's my that's like, my answer. Oreo is. I like the big chunks in it. Like if I find like a. Fossilized Oreo encased in ice cream. That's the best part. Fossilized Oreo encased in ice cream. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I like. Listen, if the Oreo isn't there, I'm I'm gonna go cookie dough. If if I don't find moose tracks, because I like a chocolate. I like a busy chocolate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't want just chocolate ice cream, but I want chocolate therapy by Ben and Jerry's. Peanut butter cup. Nah. No. Nah. That's a boomer ice cream. Here's kid. the question. You have a, either a Moose Tracks, a cookie dough, or an Oreo ice cream embedded, right? Toppings. I don't topping. So I think, just strictly no topping. So if I'm doing toppings, I'm going to go get a sundae, and that's a completely different ice cream excursion. So it's, it has to be a plain ice cream with toppings or a mixed-in ice cream with no toppings. No, you can have, like, Oreo and Moose Tracks and shit in, like, a sundae or whatever, but I'm not going to go get, let's say I get Oreo even. I'm not going to go get Oreo and then put a bunch of toppings on it. Because I just personally don't like that. I don't care what it is. Hot one, hot fudge. I hate. Why is there a hot liquid on my ice cream? Okay, it's like put, the same. Put chocolate syrup. It's cold. It's You're like creating the, the contrast. It's not good. It's like the thing that people do is they put um <laughs> they do like the deep fried ice cream. They want the like the hot shell with the well, cold insides. I missed the boat on that. I'm I'm uncultured apparently, but I, I don't like that. But if I go if I want a Sunday like a fucking uh, Jim Dandy from fucking Friendlies. I'll get Oreo and I'll get chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. I'll get, you know, if they have a uh, Rocky Road, you know, because that's a different experience. But if I just want like moose tracks, I'm just going to get moose tracks. I don't, yeah. I don't do toppings really. That's a good point. But for me, cookie dough is goaded. But raise a good argument about that Oreo. I think Oreo, I think cookie dough would be beaten out by Oreo in a nationwide poll, but I don't think it would be a hard loss. That's the question right That's there. That's a there's, poll that I want to do. There's the fucking poll to put up. Chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream or Oreo ice cream or cookies and cream ice cream, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Which one, you know what I mean? I, I would bet most they're going to say. I, I, 51-49 Oreo cookie dough, in my opinion. Mm. I want to see those results for sure. Actually, look it up to see if somebody's already done it. I bet they have. We're not original. They yeah. 100% have done that. I want to see the results of this. While he's looking that up, here's the real one. Here's here's what separate friend groups. Okay. Mm. Trump or Biden. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coke and Pepsi. Coke. 100%. All day. What's up, Steve? What's your answer? Coke. Nice. Quick answer. Nice. Yeah, there's no, we wouldn't. We don't want to associate with Pepsi people. Yeah, so I grew up and my mom always Red had till I'm dead. <laughs> case, cases of Pepsi in the house all the time. So you're traumatized. Maybe. But she, but she eventually made the shift over to Coke. Yeah. So she saw the light. She made the pilgrimage. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I love a fucking cold can of estrogen, dude. Cold can yeah. of Coke heavy. Oh, Coke incredible. heavy. Incredible. <laughs> Coke heavy. Let's see what we got here. You gov today. Oh, I haven't found anything yet. Uh, America's favorite 
Ice cream flavors, vanilla chocolate and mint chocolate. Shit. Dude, America sucks. That first of all, that wasn't the context of our question. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Okay. Now he's looking. Anybody, no, 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 anybody can go get some Jamoke off the street. He's trying. Yeah. <laughs> now he's trying to defend his crest flavored fucking <laughs> ice cream. This is a biased ass fucking pull. Damn, oh. Colgate ice cream. Tight. Okay, so here's what we've got: vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookies and cream. Chocolate chip, butter pecan, and then chocolate chip cookie dough. Ooh. Bruh. P- butter pecan over cookie dough? Yeah, that's crazy. This is a crazy... This is July 2022. Well, but here's the thing. Butter pecan wouldn't be like... If you're looking at um, Rock the Rose. main ice creams that like you got vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, strawberry. And then what do people start thinking of after that? Maybe coffee, Oreo, Oreo chocolate chip cookie, cookie dough. dough. And mint chocolate chip. Oh, here yeah. you go. This Butter pecan isn't in like the rainbow of ice creams. Oh, it breaks it down to country? No, by region in America. Um, Ooh, let's see what region we need to write off. See what these fucking off. dirt people are located Who are we at? writing oh, off in the region? So Butter pecan is mostly south. Oh, yeah, that that's fine. Out. They can have that. That checks yeah. out. And then Midwest with... Listen, East. no, no. Nope. I'm not listening to no food arguments from Ohio. Oh, yeah, the Midwest. No. The Midwest is very questionable with all things food with their canned bread. Shout out, Polly Castro. You're the man. But Skyline Chili fucking sucks. <laughs> canned bread is... Yeah, that's what I, I don't want. understand. I want spaghetti with cheese whiz on it. The fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a thing, bro. Skyline Did Chili. Did you just say spaghetti up, with cheese whiz? Bro. Canned cheese whiz. Who is letting these people do this? Ohio. Why? Ohio. I don't even want that on my computer. You know what this looks like? That boys who can Wait, cook Instagram chili account. with spaghetti what is, and cheese. What is that picture right there? It says Cincinnati chili with, and it looks like there's like marshmallows on it or something. What the fuck is it? At this? the bo- bottom, third one over. Oh, it's like fucking croutons Oyster or whatever. Oyster crackers. Oyster crackers, okay. These pictures aren't doing it justice. So imagine you go to like... I mean, like that doesn't look bad, but... Hang on. Mm-hmm. No, because that's that's a fucking good picture. Imagine you're going to a fast food restaurant, which is what it is. To get wet spaghetti and cheese. Did, did you want that? That where you want to be when Jesus come back? I don't, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want any part of that. I mean, like I can hear, I, I can hear some of my friends like, "Fuck you!" I grew, God, chili's awesome. <laughs> I grew up with like just eating spaghetti, butter, cheese as a kid and growing up. Obviously, I eat pasta, sauce, whatever. I was a, I was a potato guy, mm, but that's pretty much what I grew up eating, and that's what I I like it too. I'll have that to this day. However, who who was the first person to just be like, you know what sounds good on spaghetti? Cheese whiz in a can. Even beyond that, uh, a beef I have is a Philly cheesesteak in Philly is the worst experience ever. I've actually heard. Yeah, that's what I want. Wet bread with people, fucking canned cheese on my fucking shit steak. Dude, it sucks. I've actually heard people say, like, the Philly cheesesteak, like, it's, it's just the name. Like, it actually from there... Is like a total miss. The Philly cheesesteak that, and I've had them both. I've had Pat's, I've had Gino's, and I've had all the surrounding ones because I go to Philly all the time. It's not good. They're all they're all wet. Even doesn't matter what time of day you go. Doesn't matter. The fucking the bun is soaked with the steak oil in the grease or whatever. Which sometimes you can't get around that. I get it, but this if, is if like you're unreasonable. Taking it to go and shit, dude. Unreasonable. And they fuck. They're using literal cheese whiz on a steak and cheese that's fucking heathen that is outrageous to me that ruins the entire thing not good i'm i'm just still appalled cheese whiz on anything i'm still appalled that that cheese whiz on spaghetti is a thing no yeah it's it's it was a rough i went there and i was excited because my friend was talking it up and I was out there, and I was in Ohio, I was hanging out. With you're him. like, I like cheese. Was I like spaghetti? And, and he's like, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy you lunch. And when he brought it to me, and I tried, I was like, Oh, so this, I'm getting punked. This is a joke. <laughs> he's like, No, and he's like, Fucking housing his, and fucking everybody sees him. Everybody's fucking eating, and I'm just like, That guy again, thinking this sucks. <laughs> like it's always me. <laughs> well, you have a good palate. You know. No, good. I have no. I have, I wish I could like shit. I wish I could like, like I wish I could go to a Brazilian steakhouse and be like, "Oh, this is cool and not just a time-consuming thing to Same. slow down my appetite, so I eat less food." Fair. Yeah. So, what is your, what is your thoughts on this? I am a very anti-pasta out in a restaurant guy. 
I I'm, will, I'm that way with rice. I will not get pasta out in a restaurant or noodles or or fucking the fuck you ramen. Like for? Noodles. Noodles. Oh, why the wait, fuck is you grabbing my for? noodles? Dude, I went down a rabbit hole. We'll pause that for two seconds. I went down a rabbit hole of Baltimore. Like how they talk. Baltimore. I'm scoot, goot, magoot with the two utes down the avenue. Ask, <laughs> like, dude. Damn. Have you seen so the Ask good. Aaron to iron? Oh, the iron, at iron. Earn to do earn with the earn to tomorrow to 222. <laughs> like, dude, it's so fucking funny. Anyway, continue. Um. But so I'm an anti go out and buy filler food, ramen or pasta, period. A, a lot of people that are, a lot of my friends like ramen and I don't get it. It's a fuck the price. I mean, it's a $20 bowl of soup with an egg in it, which, you know, but it's just like, I don't like ramen at home. I didn't like ramen in jail. I, I just, don't, I don't want to eat it. I it's just, not filling. It's not. Good. I just don't understand the concept of going out and eating ramen when it's five cents at the store. Well, because it tastes better. Because it's different. It's totally different. Here I've had go. ramen. I've had ramen out at restaurants before, like on dates and stuff like that. And they're like, "We, I want to go get ramen. I'm like, well, I'm not going to say no, whatever. Where yeah, do you want to go? Because, you know. And um, But like, I get it. And I'm like, I'm just not fucking impressed at all. Like, And it's like, well done. It looks extravagant and fancy. And there's all these meats that they put in. You can get a spicy side. You can get the regular side. You can, all the chives on it. You know, they At spice the end it of up. the day, it's broth and soup. Yeah. Only if you're there to eat broth and soup and not to eat ramen. I mean. Speak on it. Testify, Steve. If you're going in with that preconceived notion and you're just like, oh, well, this is just going to be broth and soup. So I can't be impressed then you're kind of like doing like fucking olympic diving scores where you give yourself a ceiling so if it's a six out of six it could only ever be a six i'll concede to that so you're but like I'll raise ruining you it before you can get there well, and and comparing it to like store ramen and and like your thing with pasta i don't want to put words in your mouth but you've said before it's because you can cook it at home yeah better and that it doesn't take effort eh so here, here's my statement He's on it. He's very passionate about ramen. This is... This is no, I just... <laughs> I'm just talking is, to Okay, so this is my statement on pasta in restaurants and ramen out or whatever. There's a difference... Like, I can make it at home... Pan for an experience. Perfectly how I want it. There is a... In theory. Larger chance of you making it at a restaurant not exactly the way I want it. And I'm not saying that you're not a better cook than me or anything like that. I'm sure if I went to like these crazy, you know, restaurants that specialize in this pasta and I'm going to get it and I'm going to fucking love it, right? I'm not going to say I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm just saying I don't want to spend $50 on a plate of spaghetti where I know for sure, 100%, not 99%, 100% that I can make pasta at home exactly the way I want it and I'm going to fucking love that plate of pasta. Well, pasta is like rice. It's a filler food. So I don't like if you're at Chipotle, you're getting rice. It's like, there's no way around it, right? But I don't if people order Chinese food and they get a fucking side of rice. It's like, yo, you're that's that's where they're making all their money. Like pizza places are making all their money on the pizzas, not the fucking steak tips up, you know? So you you talk about how you like to make it all art. Oh, let me how you like to make it keep that in mind steve i'll concede to your argument uh that you know if you go in with a certain mindset you can only enjoy it a certain way i've went to ramen with that mindset and i fucked up a whole day it was a whole big thing uh and then i've went and i've tried it since then like once or twice and it i still it it I, it's still to soup. your point soup but yeah. like it's and and i don't know ramen i'm not a ramen weeb. I'm just a regular weeb. Um, <laughs> but, I thought you were going to make up a term like, no, I'm not a ramenologist. If, <laughs> like, uh, like, <laughs> if there's like, but still, I mean, it sounds like you guys just don't manage your expectations well. Like, if you're going to a restaurant expecting it to be the way you want it, no. They're well, going to cook it the way they cook it. I, I disagree. I don't think the point of a restaurant, you said it earlier with like fast food. They've scientifically engineered it to be how they're presenting it to you. I don't so why alter it? I feel like it's the same thing at a restaurant. You're going there and ordering food to be presented at. The, you're going to the place for the steak. You're going to the 
other plays for the chicken they do. Like, I agree with you. I think that was more directed at him. Well, uh, so, so I, I was splitting it for sure. So what triggered that is like, it's when I went to places is what triggered my response. It was it wasn't me going and saying this is gonna suck. It was me getting it and saying like, I can just make this at home. Like that's I don't that's how that I went. I just don't like it. Right. No, I love pasta and I love like rice dishes. Right. I love ball. I love all that stuff. But at the end of the day, is I'll go there. I'm just like, oh, they're just using a like a different brand cheese, or maybe they're making everything homemade, or they're making the pasta fresh here. So they're like, there's that aspect of it too. But at the end of the day, it's 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 filler. Like it's all that. Stuff. I know for sure I can't make a steak as good as other people can or whatever so if i'm going out and i'm not frying chicken here with the batter and all that good spices that they use so i'm not delusional in saying i can make better fried chicken at home i don't have a fry later or anything like that so i'm going out i'm getting fried chicken i'm getting steak i'm getting prime rib or all that good stuff but zd and ramen zd and ramen no i got that under control <laughs> uh here's a curveball and this goes into the experience and the food tasting not good korean barbecue they're opening a place. I just saw downtown. I'll be sure not the to The one or two times I've ever had Korean barbecue, I was fucking in love with it. But I now, but I can't remember exactly what I had. Hold on. I haven't had it because I know for a fact there's like not much of it around here. I hate to do this to you. Oh, I hate to. <laughs> you just said, because you can make it better at home for ramen and spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Korean barbecue is you walking into an establishment and paying to cook it yourself. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't have it like that. I oh. had it to go at a place I worked, and they got a whole bunch of takeout, got it, and I had it, my own container of whatever concoction was in there. Okay, so that's made food. Yeah. That's different. The My Korean barbecue experience, one of my homeboys in, and a couple people we were going to go, he's like, you ever had it? I'm like, no. And when I'm... I know I'm not going to like stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I know, like, how chances are, even if I go in with an open mind, I just tend to not like certain things. But I'll keep my mouth shut because I don't want to be like, nah, I'm not going to like that. And then now everybody's thinking, oh, we got to go somewhere else. I'll just shut up and I'll eat the food and whatever. But I went there and I didn't like any of it. And I just kept my mouth, <laughs> mouth shut, right? I didn't understand why I'm, I have food that all tastes like Worcestershire sauce once you dip it. No matter what sauce it goes in, it fucking goes in teriyaki or Worcestershire at some point. I'm cooking it on, in front of me, myself, so it's undercooked, it's overcooked, I'm not, you know what I mean, it's not most consistent heat, I kept my mouth shut, whatever, we leave, we pay, and he's like, how was it, did you like it, I was like, no, that was fucking terrible, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the worst dining experiences of my life, but I'm glad you guys had fun, and we experienced it together, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> but it's the it's experience just, too, like, to, to, that's what it is, that's, yeah, that's the his point, that's I your think. point, right, like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. you're going for an experience, and like, the experience is usually, like, I, I got pho the other day. I'm not paying for an experience at Chili's, you know? Welcome to Chili's. <laughs> well, what are you getting, The uh, I'm getting fajitas, dude. <laughs> right. Uh, but how, chicken crispers. If you're get, so Chili's is actually a perfect example. Have you ever ordered the Cajun chicken pasta? I don't think so. The macaroni? Okay. And is that because of the pasta? Yeah. Because, like, the Cajun chicken is still chicken that's prepared, and then the pasta adds in. If so. I'm going to get a chicken dish, and I'm, this is the argument strictly for it's, Chili's, is I'm getting those honey chipotle chicken crispers, dog. Sure, but that but doesn't satisfy the argument. Would you order a pasta dish if it has a meat, or even if it's like if it's chicken piccata with some sort of like mm. if it's any type of pasta dish, I'm not I'm not paying for it. Even if the main the pasta is the complement to the chicken or the whatever. What if you're in an Italian meat? restaurant in America, like ravioli? I mean, I can still fuck with some American Italian food. Like, I have you ever had real Italian food? It's a lot of fucking fish. No, I. Mm. Well, well, that's my. You're thing. You're not like, getting a fucking meatball, man. Like, it's it's like a lot well, of like it's like, raw... a, it's like our version of Chinese food. It's not really Chinese food. Oh, it's I hate just... Chinese food. You hate Chinese food, dude. Por qué? <laughs> We're all over the place here. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, Chinese food. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, we're ordering Chinese? Is it because oh, of the rice? The rice is in there. But it's also because it's not good. And what I mean by that is dumplings are good. I like the dumplings. Crab and I, I think the pork fried rice tastes good. Or shrimp fried rice or whatever. I think it tastes good. I don't really like the chicken wings or the teriyaki or anything. But like the usual like 
fight night or Super Bowl Chinese food, like that smorgasbord that shows up, yeah. platter, chicken fingers, whatever. It's it's all filler food. It's all shit you're going to be hungry in 20 minutes. And it's even beyond that argument, it's just all salty in the same. Yeah. You know, I don't have I don't have the like nostalgia for it. I don't like crave it. I can see all. that point of it like whenever I eat Chinese food, it makes me feel like shit after. I don't I mean, I eat a lot of things that make me feel like shit. I don't care. You know, it just it doesn't it doesn't feel good at first even. Like you just eat it and it's like this is whatever. My only issue with Chinese food is that they never put all of the like all star choices in a combo together. They do it's that on purpose. Always like three out of four are good, and then they've got fucking spare ribs on there. You don't like the spare ribs? Fuck no. Mm. I get the spare ribs like, on purpose. Like the spare rib, man. That's the <coughs> pork. That's like the best meat they're serving you. I like the teriyaki chicken. I'm not crab a teriyaki. Or, or, excuse me, teriyaki beef. I get not the crab chicken. rangoons and the the spare ribs. Mm. In a combo. See, I, when I, if I'm going to order Chinese food or if I'm going to a Chinese food place, I'm going to get two orders of dumplings for myself, mm-hmm. steamed or fried. It just depends on what they're offering. And that's just what I'm going to eat. I don't, I don't really like the other shit. I don't know. I don't like communal food. Yo, that makes me sense. Neither. Yeah. Like, even if yeah. we're not eating it communally, because, like, it's that's 2024, like, we're not, you know, well, that's the not dipping my hands in your plate. But it just, I don't like Do you consider style. pizza communal food? The way I eat pizza? No, that's a me food. I bought well, that that's large a pizza thing. for yeah, me. You... Oh, I can only speak for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. All of this is, you know, opinions and whatever. But but at, at the same time, like, that's, that's just my thing about pasta and ramen. It's just... I, just, I don't think you're wrong. I, I mean, you have the same thing about played. rice, so... it's Well, I have the same thing of it as it being filler food. If you're going but you also spend, eat dry-ass sandwiches. Yeah, that's something that should be aired out. That's crazy. <laughs> Mayonnaise is gross. That's fine, but there are other condiments that add flavor that have nothing to do with moistening your mouth, as you say. It just adds to the flavor <clears throat> profile, and you're anti-condiment because I can eat shit dry because you're a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. All right.